titled Improving Chemistry of Batteries, Improving Vehicle Performance. Uh, My name is Jeroen van Bell. I uh, work at the European Commission in the, uh, the uh, Clean Planet Directive that uh, was introduced this morning. Uh, and uh, I formed a liaison with the, the Battery Partnership, uh, Bat for You, which you probably have heard about. And uh, Sorry, now uh, I'm back. <laughs> and which is going to take over all of the battery research and innovation under um, Horizon Europe. But here we are still looking at projects that were funded under Horizon 2020 when there was not yet this uh, partnership so that um, the activities were a little bit uh, spread. Now, I won't recap No, it's, it's lighting, but... Okay, thank you. So I won't um, repeat all of the points of uh, this morning about the Green Deal and uh, Fit for 55. Um, I think you know the story by now. Let me just um, say that it is clear that uh, Europe is going to need a lot of uh, batteries. So um, depending on the projections, uh, we should see an increase of 15 to almost 20 fold in uh, battery production worldwide and the ambition of Europe is to become the second player after China as of 2025 and uh, to become largely self-sufficient also in the uh, production of batteries. So we understand that there is a lot of weight, a lot of emphasis on, uh, on the batteries. And for that reason, this morning, we already had a session on the solid-state batteries. And um, now, this afternoon, we're going to look at some alternative chemistries. Um, I think it is clear for all of us that we are still looking for improved performance and improved uh, safety of the batteries. But the recent developments in uh, the Ukraine have also made it very clear how vulnerable Europe is in terms of um, dependence on critical uh, raw materials. So some of the projects that we will hear this afternoon are also looking in reducing um, our dependence on these critical uh, raw materials. So I won't bother you any longer. I know it's uh, just after lunchtime, so the challenge is to keep you awake. Um, just to give you the outline, so each of the four speakers is getting 15 minutes to give uh, a brief overview of uh, their projects. And after that, we will have a Q&A session, which is moderated by Peter Preninger, who is uh, sitting next to me here. So, without uh, further ado, let me introduce the first speaker. His name is Michele De Gennaro. I hope I pronounce it well. Grazie. He has a, a background in aeronautics, and um, I think he is probably the most prolific uh, project coordinator managing a portfolio of, how many was it, 20 projects? 20, so, yeah. <laughs> so, Michele, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Johan. Can you hear me well? At the okay, perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> so, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to be here today and to present uh, uh, Tree Belief, which is one of the projects that we manage. My name is Michele De Gennaro. I'm from Eastern Institute of Technology. And Tree Belief uh, stands for delivering the generation, the 3B generation of LNMO cells for XCD market of 25 and beyond. Tree Belief <coughs> was born uh, out of the LC Bat 5 2019 call as some other projects that are presented today, and uh, encompass a very large consortium and a very broad spectrum of topics and activities. The consortium is made of 21 partners from nine member states of the European Union, plus one associated country, Norway. And uh, we have, uh, um, it's a project which is automotive centered. We do have two vehicle OEMs, one for light duty and one for heavy duty, CRF, um, representing light duty vehicles and Volvo trucks representing heavy duty vehicles. Five RTOs, AT, CIC, Fraunhofer, Sealiten, and Enea 
one university, RWTH, and 11 additional industrial partners on top of the two OEMs, um, which are Elchem, Haldo, Topso, Arkema, Custom Cell, Explorion, NXP, Valeo, Mans, Sensichip, ABE, DSM, and SNAM. Out of these overall 13 industrial partners, four are SME. The project started on the 1st of January 2020, just before the pandemic. We had just one physical meeting, the kickoff, <laughs> and all, all the rest <laughs> remotely. Um, and it's scheduled to end uh, by mid of 2023. So what I'm going to present today are midterm results, interim results, giving some snapshots of what we have done so far. The project has a total funding of uh, a little bit above 10.8 million euro, and it's coordinated by AT. So three beliefs reflect the diversity and the complexity of the LCBAT 2019 call. Uh, which was uh, very, very broad. And uh, we see that some of the call under the destination two of the class of five steps a little bit back and, and go narrowing, narrowing a little bit the topic. Anyway, she believe was uh, conceived uh, to be <coughs> as uh, um, inclusive as possible for all the topic and all the challenges of the LCBAT five call. And it's built uh, around the three main activity pillar, pillars of activity. The first pillar is a, a chemistry pillar. We want to deliver a Gen 3B high voltage cobalt free LNMO cathode. We want to develop a portfolio of technologies of internal and external sensors together with a smart BMS and adaptive liquid cooling system for the battery module MPEC with advanced diagnostics and operational function. And uh, we developed in Tree Believe a cradle to cradle approach to the battery topic, uh, starting with the uh, manufacturing of electrode cells module packs going up to the recycling part for first life second life and recycling and uh, we tackle manufacturability which is an engineering topic which is very relevant for uh, delivering the gigafactory volume that we do need in our future in europe finally the project at the end will deliver two battery demonstrator uh, of around 96 cell each for a total number of cells produced during the project of around 250. So around 200 will end up in the final pack demonstrator and 50 will be spare for cycling test and recycling test. And each battery pack will have a 12 kilowatt hour capacity. It, it will be demonstrated at TRL six. One battery pack will be fit for 400 volt application. So mainly light duty and small light duty. And uh, another one will be fit for 800 volt application. That's why we want to cover as broad as we can the spectrum of electrified vehicles. So <coughs> the next slides will be basically some snapshots of the results of the project as they were reported at the midterm. So they are not final. They are not the final results that we will deliver, but give quite a good idea of what we are, gonna, we are, we are doing currently. The first slide here, it's about some interim results on the chemistry and the cobalt free uh, LMO cathode. On the left hand side of the slide, we see the earliest uh, um, cycling results on the half cell cathode. We did uh, develop three types of LNMO that we have labeled as type one, type two, type three. And what we can see is that we do achieve quite some good cycling results. These results were presented also at the SAE World Congress last year. And we do achieve uh, a capacity between 125 and 135 milliampere hour gram at half cell level, which is quite close. It's around 8%, 80 to 90% of the theoretical capacity of 147 milliampere hour gram. That's the maximum that is achievable by the chemistry itself. In the mid part of the slide, you see some results for the half cell type two LMO for uh, different types of processing, aqueous processing versus NMP processing. <coughs> so we were able to develop and deliver such capacity with aqueous processing. And on the right hand, hand side of the slide, you can see the first results on the full cell. These are not the final cell of Tree Believe. Tree Believe will deliver the final chemistry at the end of April, so approximately one more time, but these were results, some results which are at the moment some months old, where we see that coupling the type one, in this case, LMO with some, uh, with an LAP30 electrolyte and a graphite anode, we have a drop in capacity as was expected. And now we are working on inserting silicon in the anode to increase the capacity. We are, we are working on 5%, 10%, and 15% of silicon insertion in the, in the anode. Um, 
yes, that's, that's the snapshot on, on chemistry. Moving then to the sensors. A large part of activities of Chibilif are about sensors. And when we speak about sensor, we speak about internal sensor and external sensor. For internal sensor, we are developing, together with our partners, a solution for an in-cell nanoplasmonic sensor integration. Basically, it's a fiber optic, which is inserted into the cell, and uh, you basically give pulsating lights into this fiber optic, and you, and you study the reflection and reflection of the light within the cell, within the electrode, to get, to get the information about the state of health and state of X in general of, of the electrode. Uh, we were developing the physical integration of this fiber optic. We were developing a board capable of digitalizing <coughs> the analog signal coming from the, from the fiber optic. And we were working a lot on the packing of the cell itself, avoiding leakage out of, out of the cell itself. Moving then to the external sensor, one of the results that I would like to present today, it's this uh, multi-measure on the CMU, where CMU stands for Cell Management Unit. This is a one of the most promising results of the project, it's a custom chip which is capable of uh, being attached to the cell and being powered by the cell itself, so it does not need an external power. And it's connected to the electrodes and it's connected to uh, an external <coughs> electrode sensor. And it's capable of performing approximately 40 different measurements uh, on live on the cell itself. Some, of me some measurements are just thermal measurements, control of the temperature of the electrodes and of the cell itself, internal and external, estimating uh, um, voltage, current, all the classical parameters, also estimating <coughs> some gassing, body wetness, and uh, um, mechanical strain of ce on, the cell on the cell itself. So monitoring how the cell develops along its life. And this approach of having uh, uh, a cell per cell monitoring at one hertz might be quite interesting for the BMS of the future, collecting data and collecting data on the first and second life of the cell, as well as collecting collective data for developing smart BMS. Um, smart BMS. <coughs> moving then to the third pillar of Jubilee, moving to the manufacturing. We have different activities in the manufacturing, one of which is the one that it's presented on this slide. In this slide, uh, we are developing uh, and we are testing in our pilot line 880 a artificial intelligence powered machine to detect the defects on the, on the coating. So on the, on, the, on the left part of the slide here, you see a very simple schematic of our um, coating machine. After the drying of the electrode, we have a camera and the camera uh, observe basically the coating uh, basically flashing different types of light and, and uh, igniting some different optical phenomena in a way that we can detect uh, imperfection uh, on the coating itself. And uh, we are using a machine learning algorithm, so the, the, the camera and the, and the algorithm behind should learn how to detect these defects and, and, uh, and inform the pilot line automatically. And at the moment we are training the algorithm to detect defects, placing manually some defects on the coating itself. And last but not least among the results that I want to present today, it's about uh, the Gigafactory process modeling. This is a less scientific, a little bit more engineering part of the project. <coughs> Here we have uh, modeled together with our partners uh, the overall uh, processes that uh, a Gigafactory should implement. So um, basically we went through all the steps for uh, um, delivering a Gigafactory capable of 10 gigawatt hour per year of production and uh, we have modeled all the single steps one by one, and we are now putting together this to get an overall factory model. Uh, we have s some of these steps are reported here. We have the electrode production, the cell assembly made, made of notching, electrode, cut, uh, electrode cutting, lamination and stacking, taping, tartining and welding, deep drawing and packaging, and electrolyte filling, and finally cell finishing. And the animation that you see on the screen basically uh, concern the tub trimming and welding, just just as an example. And uh, beyond uh, uh, beyond the, the the animation itself, what we can get out of this modeling is a model of a gigafactory. How we have to build a gigafactory? This is a recipe that we are searching for. And what is the throughput of this, this gigafactory? And what is the energy intensity that we need to invest in this gigafactory to deliver cell? These are a very important aspect that we do need for delivering the European battery manufacturing industry. 
moving ahead. I'm coming to the conclusion of my presentation. Um, Tree Believer uh, also collaborates with, of course, other projects which have been funded under the same call, the LCBAF5. We have formed together with other projects an LCBAF5 cluster, which is made of Cobra, which we'll present just after this presentation, Hydra, and Sense. And we have had so far two events, one in November 2020, the batch of the future webinar, and one in June 2021, the Ugreen Week. And we are planning another one for May, as well as we issue a joint newsletter. We are looking for uh, cooperating also with other projects. As we know, the Commission recently um, concluded the Destination 5, the Class of 5 Destination 201 or 2 call, which is again on the Gen 3B. So we are looking forward the uh, winners of that one for cooperating together. And in terms of impact of the project, uh, Tree Believe aims at building capacity for the European battery manufacturing industry along the full value chain trying to touch all the process from the raw materials up to the recycling and having a circular approach. As I said before, we do develop cell chemistry, sensors and manufacturing, and uh, we have a very strong environmental focus, which is <coughs> beyond the, 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 the topic itself. It's also about recyclability. We have also recyclability activities within the project. And at least at lab level, we're gonna dismantle the cell at the end of the project and see how much we can reuse of the raw materials. This is the, my last slide. I invite you to visit www.treebelieve.eu and to visit our Twitter account and LinkedIn account. We keep this always up to date. For any further question, you can either contact me, michele.degenaro Michele at or my colleague Boshida, which is the coordinator of the project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Michele, for this very smooth and uh, interesting introduction of uh, Three Believe. Um, let us now pass to the next speaker. It's uh, Dr. Jordi Jacas. He is a leading researcher for the battery section at the Catalonia Institute for Energy Research, and he works on next generation uh, batteries, including lithium, sulfur, and generation 3B. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. It's, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, COBRA stands for Cobalt Free Batteries for Future Automotive Applications. And um, COBRA is a research and innovation project, obviously, and started in January 2020, and the expected um, end of the project is December 2023. Project pro uh, the COBRA project was granted with a total of 11.8 million of euros, and the consortium includes 19 partners. Uh, three of them are universities, seven RTOs, four SMEs, and five enterprises. So the aim of the COBRA project is to develop a novel cobalt-free lithium-ion battery technology, and we expect to demonstrate this technology at the TRL level six, which means the battery pack level. Regarding the objectives, we have very specific objectives, which are also very challenging. Regarding the cathode, we are working with a new and more exotic uh, compositions, which are called lithium rich oxides, which are composite oxides of rhomboidal and monoclinic phases. And we are expecting to reach discharge capacities beyond 250 milliampere hour per gram at low C rates, together with a long cycling of 2,000 cycles. And obviously, we are looking for fast charging up to 3 C, 3 C delivering between 100 and 150 milliampere hour per gram. We have similar objective for the anode, which is a silicon graphite composite. So we are looking at high capacity high cycle life of 2,000 cycles and also to be able to 
brief capacity um, up to three T. This is obviously complemented with electrolyte to ensure SEI and uh, catholyte electrolyte interface formation of both electrodes and to perform stably uh, beyond 4.5 volts. Um, at cell level, energy density is one of the main targets, which is 750 parts hour per liter, together with fast charging. This is gonna be complemented with advanced DMS to ensure and improve the performance of the cells and the batteries, together with uh, weight reduction of the final battery pack down to uh, at least 50% of its weight, uh, battery pack weight. Regarding the safety, environmental, and financial, we also have very um, optimistic and specific objectives, which are increase the safety, using extra additive to reduce the flammability of the cell, um, improve the safety of the battery housing, able to contain the fire for at least 30 minutes, uh, increase the housing tensile strike and the impact resistance of the battery pack, and all of this is gonna be complemented which is the main point of the project of getting rid of cobalt completely from the battery itself using um, uh, a life cycle assessment right from the beginning from the materials and the components, attain 95% recyc recyclability of the metal, fabrication of green and recycled battery housing together with the silicon materials that we are using for the anode as recycled silicon materials from waste the stream. Finally, the financial uh, aspect or objective, which is shared with all the LC bat pipe cluster, um, is to reach 90 euros per kilowatt hour for the battery pack. When it comes to result uh, from these um, 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 very ambitious objectives, we can start with a cobalt free cathode, as I was mentioned, with a lithium rich oxide. And currently, we are looking at uh, Li 1.2 rich compositions, and we are able to obtain nearly 200 milliampere hour per, per gram uh, with uh, a capacity of retention of around 95% um, after 150 cycles. The materials are able to supply capacity 100 milliampere <coughs> hour per gram at 3C, and we are very interested in looking and understanding these materials from the um, microstructural point of view, so we are realizing that depending on the dopings that we are using, we are changing from a segregation of the different phases, the rhomboidal and the monoclinic, to a more the formation of nano domains within the particles, which is it, that is affecting a lot the performance of the electron material. Regarding silicon, we are currently using 10% weight of silicon, combined it with graphite, we have good cyclability for the silicon, the recycled silicon, as I mentioned. This is recycled silicon that is coming from different waste sources. So we're using the recycling of the photovoltaic panel, for instance. So we are using a lot of treatments for making this silicon active and to perform it uh, at the way you can see it here. So delivering capacity of around 700 on the initial cycles and then down to 400 milliampere hour per gram. And this silicon is also able to deliver capacity up to 3C, which is 475 milliampere hour per gram. Following up with the electrolyte, obviously, as we are having two materials that need to be formed in a very stable way and operating at high voltage, we have a lot of research on the electrolytes, looking at ionic liquids and new formulation and new additives. So these are um, representative figures of the profile of the, of the cell. This is full cell results, the one that you can see on the left-hand side, on the top side. So the characteristic plateau of 4.5 volts, which is characteristic of these lithium-rich oxides. Also, we are looking at these additives to increase the stability, as I mentioned also, as a function of the flash, flash point and the function of the conductivity for these electrolytes in order to get good performance at high C rates. And uh, also, good results we are obtaining with ionic liquids, so we are managing to up push the capacity of the cells up to 210 milliampere hour per gram at C over three using ionic liquids. Regarding cell level, um, we are very active also on this topic. So um, we are trying to scale our green processing for the cathodes, for like the assembly of the cells and uh, achieving 
um, capacities beyond 200 per foot to a pipe. And also we are assembling many cells using LTO as a reference and counter um, electrode in order to monitor the impedance and improve the stability of the cell. Following up with, uh, with our cells, obviously we are gonna be assembling these cells in the modules. We're gonna these modules and these, and we are gonna include obviously many sensors in that, in that in that modules, and we're gonna have wireless communication between these sensors. These sensors mainly is gonna be um, impedance, uh, temperature, pressure, and strain, uh, together with gas sensor as well into the battery pack. And that is gonna be assembled as in a form of a battery pack, which is gonna be cleaned and, and recycled using wood and aluminum. Um, Obviously, for the validation of the battery pack, we are using uh, real driving conditions. Um, the aim is to use this battery pack in a urban electrical vehicle. So we are looking at three 30 kilowatts hour um, um, battery packs for uh, power up uh, these light vehicles. And obviously, I was mentioning right at the beginning, we are doing uh, following up the environmental impact <coughs> of, of, of our technology right from the beginning using life cycle assessment uh, cradle to gate uh, in the project. Mm, just following on with my colleague, was Michelle was mentioning, so we have been very interacting with the cluster LC Bat 5, so we have been doing uh, sharing newsletter, we have been actually um, sharing also um, different meetings, uh, Michelle has already mentioned them, so it's not really important for me to go again to them. And regarding the impact, uh, in the frame of the project, we are expecting to have generation X pound cells, which is gonna be the capacity, capacity of between 30 and 40 ampere hours. These are gonna be large cells for the project, which is challenging uh, to be released uh, now, soon. So um, we are expecting <laughs> that, uh, sorry, this is gonna be um, 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 August 2022, sorry. We are expecting generation two, it's gonna happen now. But the final cells are gonna be in August 2022. Obviously, this is going to be complemented with our advanced DNS system, which is going to be the beginning of 2023. And then in the middle of 2023, we're going to have the assembly of the final battery packs, which then are going to be tested in the, in the test phase. Um, and finally, just to complement this impact in the frame of um, what the COBRA project is going to add value into the society, from the technical point of view, we're going to aim to demonstrate the technology, this lithium-rich technology, challenging, but we expect to be there. Obviously, to keep working on the silico, silico anode, so we hope to complement the, the effort that many people is doing on the silicon anodes, improve the cell chemistry, and obviously to reach the ambitious targets of energy density of 700, 500 watts hour per liter, and obviously uh, introduce new smart sensor and advanced uh, battery management system. And to finish up regarding environmental and cost, um, so far I know COBRA is gonna be, well, together with my colleagues, no, COBRA, COBRA free uh, technology, um, which is challenging, um, especially in either in terms of capacity or in terms of voltage. So we are working towards that direction. And the ultimate goal is to accelerate the implementation of generation 3D lithium ion batteries. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. That was a, a very quick uh, introduction. We're well ahead of time. So um, then we will move to our next speaker, uh, Dr. Michela Ottaviani. She works at uh, the University of Limerick in Ireland, and she is an expert on silicon-based anodes for advanced lithium-ion batteries. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. My name is Michele Ottaviani. In this moment, I am glad to represent uh, my group in the, the University of Limerick uh, that is leading the SI Drive project. Uh, SI Drive project uh, is an ambitious project uh, where we are uh, basically define a new chemistry for the lithium ion battery cell. Uh, I will describe more in detail later. It's a project that is having uh, a funding of uh, about uh, 8 million of euro. 
and uh, is involving uh, 16 academic and industrial partners that are all spread along Europe uh, and uh, specifically along uh, seven different countries uh, in Europe. Uh, and the project coordinator is uh, Professor Kevin Ryan from the University of Limerick. So, as I was telling before, our ambitious project is to create, uh, uh, develop and demonstrate an innovative cell chemistry that is based on uh, a high voltage rhythm rich uh, cathode uh, and uh, a polymeric base uh, electrolyte uh, and uh, a silicon coated uh, 3D nanowires anode. Uh, which is the vision of the SI Drive project. Uh, um, we, are, um, we are thinking that our main object will be to demonstrate uh, at the end of this uh, fourth year that they started just uh, in uh, this February 2021 because the project will proceed until February 2022. So we are a uh, little uh, forward the midterm and uh, we will be able to demonstrate a TRL5 uh, for a prototype with high energy density, long uh, cycle life, uh, fast uh, charging uh, and uh, of course uh, we have to consider also the safety aspect and uh, uh, re recyclability uh, which will be the impact of this project is uh, to increase the European batteries competitiveness in increasing uh, the electric vehicle uptake uh, and uh, reducing uh, the consumer cost uh, and uh, the greenhouse uh, gas. Uh, for the anode development uh, within the work package one, uh, the University of Limerick is leading uh, this work package. And uh, basically what we are doing, uh, we are developing uh, a nanostructure current collector that is a copper silicide core that is uh, surrounded by a uh, high loading uh, uh, amorphous silicon coating. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are at the stage of one mg per centimeter square of amorphous silicon that we are able to deposit. And uh, as we all know that silicon is having the dropping, uh, um, sorry, the drawback of a very, um, very high um, uh, losing of uh, the initial capacity. So we are working uh, in collaboration with the KIT on using uh, the extra capacity that is coming from the lithium bridge uh, a cathode for compensating this capacity loss. Unfortunately, I don't have the, grass, the graph of the very last result, but, but at the moment we achieve uh, about uh, 350 cycle with the um, capacity retention above, above the 90% with these uh, strategies. Um, as the uh, main aspect of our project is to go from a lab scale to an industrial scale, we are in all the work package uh, uh, paying a particular attention on what is the upscaling. At the moment, uh, from uh, the work package one, we are able to provide to our project partner um, a prototype of anode that are having uh, an aerial surface of about uh, 30 centimeters square because uh, our partner of the work package four at the moment are working uh, on small prototypes of pouch cell. Uh, which is the target for the anode site. Uh, our target is a 100 cycle in a full cell configuration with 80% of the capacity retention at 60. Here I'm showing just the preliminary results that were fundamental for us for identifying the best uh, uh, composition of the ionic liquid electrolyte uh, that uh, demonstrated to be the most promising one regarding the anode side. For the port package two, the leader of the work package is the uh, NIA uh, Reserve Center. And uh, we are um, developing uh, ionic liquid based electrolytes and uh, we successful, uh, um, the, uh, we successful uh, um, um, embedded this kind of electrolyte in a polymer matrix, uh, thanks to the collaboration with the Politecnico di Torino. And uh, uh, what is crucial in this particular aspect of the electrolyte, we are always monitoring what is happening at the interface between the electrolyte and the, uh, and the anode. So we are monitoring uh, the SCI composition for understanding uh, and for having feedbacks uh, from uh, uh, the, um, this kind of analysis uh, for understanding the properties of all the materials involved in the project. At the moment uh, with uh, with this kind of uh, electrolytes formulation, we are having uh, um, high, um, high capacities uh, uh, with uh, also uh, for the high current uh, above uh, 2C. And this is really promising results. 
As I was underlining from the anode side, our main target is to upscaling every uh, specific part of our cells. So also in this case, in collaboration with the Solvoionic, we, uh, we observe that we achieve an increase in the volume and in the yield of the electrolyte that can be promising for an upscaling production at, uh, uh, at the industrial scale. Uh, regarding the cattle development uh, within the work package tree, uh, this uh, part is uh, leaded by the KIT. At the moment, uh, we achieve the 80% of the capacity retention after 500 cycle with the most promising uh, formulation of the ionic liquid. Uh, because of the nickel content of the um, cathode, we are also um, working on uh, the artificial uh, CEI for trying to, uh, to have a better control uh, from on the cathode side. Uh, this kind of ionic liquid electrolyte, uh, as is shown in the graph in the center, is uh, showing an outstanding uh, uh, performance as compared to the standard electrolyte uh, that is the carbonate base one in red. And uh, the most important aspect for us uh, on using this ionic liquid electrolyte is to avoid uh, any kind of flammability of the cell and uh, uh, we demonstrate uh, that, that this is possible. Again, uh, by having uh, um, a view uh, always focus on uh, which is the upscalability of our material. At the moment, uh, we are able to provide uh, to the partners um, a cathode up to five uh, uh, kilograms uh, um, for having a, a larger scale of production. Regarding the work package four, that is the full cell testing, uh, we are uh, having the leadership uh, of the CDETEC uh, that is uh, working on the full cell harmonization with the anode and the cathode and the electrolyte that we are providing them. Uh, and uh, they are, at the moment, at this stage, uh, they are comparing uh, the performances of the silicon uh, nanowires based electrolyte with a more standard uh, silicon graphite based anode for understanding for the different currents uh, which are the performances of our anode. And again, uh, the most promising formulation of the ionic liquid electrolyte is uh, the same that we observe within the other work packages. Uh, regarding, the, um, regarding the work package five, uh, we are having a very important feedbacks uh, from uh, our partner uh, DLR because they are working on the modeling uh, of uh, our material. And this is another important aspect that is giving uh, to the material people very important feedback, especially regarding the interface between uh, the electrolyte, uh, the anode, and the electrolyte of the cathode, because we all know how it's crucial to having a good SCA and CEA formation. And uh, through the simulation uh, model, we are having uh, feedbacks regarding uh, uh, our materials. Um, by going on uh, to the work package six uh, that is leaded from FAM, we are going uh, from uh, uh, the lab scale to a more industrial scale and uh, they are analyzing uh, small prototypes uh, and they are also evaluating uh, industrial protocols for the, uh, for the cell testing uh, and the aging. Here the main aim uh, is to achieve uh, the fast charging for uh, our cell that is uh, at 60, that is corresponding to our uh, 10 minutes of charge. And uh, at the moment, uh, this is uh, the very initial results that we are having with a silicon graphite blend. But uh, in these uh, months, uh, we are working on testing uh, the silicon uh, anode-based material. Uh, regarding uh, the last uh, work package, that is the work package seven, we are uh, having a lot of attention. We are paying attention on uh, uh, which can be the real feasibilities of these uh, prototypes that we are developing. Uh, and uh, again, uh, by having uh, a view uh, focus on the, which can be the prospective at industrial scale, we are working on the design of the demanufacturing and remanufacturing process uh, with uh, an automatic uh, mm, uh, process, but we are also paying uh, attention on which is the uh, recycling of all the materials that we are using uh, for our cell. So uh, at, the, at the moment, uh, we are between the TRL4 and we are moving uh, to the TRL5, uh, but uh, the project, of course, uh, the ambition of the project is to go beyond the project that they will finish in uh, February 2023. 
and uh, our aim is to develop uh, uh, batteries that can be used in a real electric vehicle and uh, with the target of achieving uh, above uh, 450 uh, watt hours per kilogram by 2030. Uh, by going a little bit more in detail uh, after the demonstration of the TRL5 uh, by the end of the project with, uh, um, with an energy density uh, between uh, 350 and 400 uh, watt hours per kilogram, uh, what uh, could be refined by the 2030 is uh, a, a phase one uh, when we can uh, uh, refine the cell chemistry for demonstrating uh, the, uh, the progress from the TRL5 to the TRL7. And then uh, we can go to a phase two when we can really work on the uh, production upscaling uh, and uh, by demonstrating uh, the progression between uh, TRL7 to TRL9 and demonstrate uh, the performance of an electric vehicle. And then uh, the final da target uh, by 2030 will be uh, the application in a real uh, electric vehicle uh, and this can be a very strong uh, um, improvement regarding uh, the especially the environment impact because uh, we are all hoping that we can have more electric vehicles on by the date of 20, uh, 2030. Um, thanks a lot uh, for your attention. That's all from my side. And uh, if you need more information, you can contact me or the project coordinator or can have a look uh, to our social media and uh, website. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Michela, for another very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to remind you all that um, we have time for questions after the last presentation that is coming now. So please write down or memorize your, your uh, questions and uh, responses for then. So now the final presentation in this session is given by Christophe Auchet. And he is working at LATAT in uh, Barcelona, where he uh, works on uh, the energy storage uh, team. So, Christophe, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, invitation. And uh, it's really great to see all of this face. This is a long time ago. So, firstly, in this first slide, uh, a snapshot about uh, lithium sulfur activity worldwide. Uh, lithium sulfur existing since uh, 15 years ago, um, but really at a company level, I believe, just before your 2000, it was some company working there, maybe firstly Sion Power, and after Oxys that has been starting in 2004 and finishing in 2020. Uh, obviously, the champion is at GKM, uh, but you can see that since the last eight years, you have several spin offs that has been developing a prototype on the pilot manufacturing around this technology. So it is, it is definitively TRL 5.7 for this technology. And uh, regarding the performance, uh, you have kind of threshold between uh, energy and suitability. Uh, so high energy density, uh, low number of cycle, and uh, lower energy density, you can reach something that it is comparable to lithium ion, for example. Uh, what it is important to take in consideration, recently in nature, at the beginning of the year, I see at least two publications claiming uh, plenty of cycle for lithium sulfur. But what you have to take in consideration, it is what you have in this, uh, on the right, uh, is uh, the, uh, the format no, of the component that you will put in the cell. Uh, is meaning that if you want to reach something above 400, whatever per kilo, you have to respect this capping. And in none of these articles, they are respecting it. No? So it's why you have always something different from what you see from the literature on what it is really uh, possible to be done at an industrial relevant level. Uh, so Lisa is a 14 uh, partner project, 8 million euro, 100% uh, funding by the uh, European Commission. Uh, we lose Oxys on May last year. Uh, Oxys was a company that was dedicated to the lithium sulfur manufacturing in England. Uh, and we replace them by Nextech. Uh, that they are based now in Italy. Uh, originally, they are come from California. 
Uh, the CTO is uh, the ex-CTO of uh, SATKI, for people that know about solid state. Uh, so they joined the consortium since November to take uh, the lead on the task uh, done by Exis. Many of them, I believe, the six, the five first partner, so it's coordinated by LETAT, the five first partner basically has come in from the previous Alize project. So the KPI are uh, like, uh, like everybody, you know, to make a safer and uh, more performant uh, uh, technology than what it is available. First Alize project was based on a plug hybrid vehicle, so much more to make it working on power. Uh, with big limitation for lithium sulfur to work on power uh, on also volume is another uh, uh, limitation so we really target bigger uh, battery pack on the uh, full electrical uh, vehicle like uh, like bus no a bit the same tendencies that we can see for hydrogen no? for example this is the uh, overall result up to now so the project will finish at the end of this year so our baseline uh, is coming from Alize project. So here you have the link to, to see more on that. Basically, we stop at 310 watt hour per kilo at uh, more than 10 ampere hour uh, to shell level, which is relevant. Uh, on November 2020, we achieve uh, 400 watt hour per kilo, 450 watt hour per liter at uh, 18 ampere hour at cell level. Uh, Lisa was really focused on manufacturing because this is something that we saw from the first project that if you want to make plenty of push shell, uh, more than 10 ampere hour, you need to, to have component at this level. Uh, so we developed hybrid solid electrolyte uh, by Comabar process uh, on the different strategy for cathode. At least we have three different manufacturing for cathode that are providing this 400 watt hour per kilo at cell level. Uh, on different strategy also for coating with uh, uh, inorganic uh, solid state electrolyte on membrane and on lithium to make our own lithium also as we saw uh, sometime this day. Uh, and we develop uh, both model no, in terms of push shell and cylindrical cell on uh, all what it is uh, state of health estimator and uh, state of uh, charge estimator uh, that I will show you uh, several. Uh, this is what we get regarding uh, pulse laser deposition process. Uh, so you can do it, uh, we can do it by roll to roll. Uh, basically to make on our lithium, here you have a comparison uh, to bare lithium. So you see that with a limited uh, thickness of lithium, you reach a similar result that using bare lithium. And the idea was to make a succession of layers on the top of it. So lithium, lipon, or sulfide uh, with the same process. Uh, here you have uh, LGPS on the top of uh, a specific separator that we developed by electrospinning. Uh, why we use nanocellulose in this case is because you have an unseed thermal property respect polyethylene that it is baseline for separator for lithium ion battery, polyethylene, polypropylene. Uh, nanocellulose gives you much more temperature for the processing. So this is also important parameter when you want to make physical deposition or this kind of things. Uh, the conductivity is not uh, excellent. We get a lot of issues with this material. It is sensitive to everything, to humidity, to manufacturing. And once the cell is reacting with the electrolyte, it's really, really tricky to work with sulfide. Uh, this is a generation that we did in November 2020. So uh, this is uh, more than, this is almost 20 ampere hour cell level. Uh, that is giving more than 400 watt hour per kilo and uh, approx uh, 450 watt hour per liter. So uh, yeah, pretty online with uh, what you can find uh, in the state of the art. This is another process for making uh, cathode manufacturing. So here we do, uh, Arkema do a material by uh, co-extrusion together uh, carbon nanotube and sulfur. And after you have the process from, uh, from front over that it is dry processing, is meaning uh, without solvent. Uh, so you have this three roll uh, mixer no? and basically you can lift up uh, the, the cathode from your uh, current collector. So dry manufacturing. Uh, this is solid state battery, maybe one of the first uh, uh, for lithium sulfur at least. So here we can see that we reach almost uh, the theoretical capacity of the sulfur, but 
Uh, it could be that uh, the solid state electrolyte is participating also to the reaction, but at least this is a, a kind of first proof of concept uh, without using electrolyte. Uh, here the cell is a pushhead of 6 ohm per hour, and it is a solid sheet of each component, no? lithium, solid state electrolyte, and the mix of uh, cathode and uh, solid state electrolyte. So really without electrolyte. Uh, this is the first result uh, from Nextech uh, now in the consortium. So here you have more than 1,000 cycles, 82% uh, of the retention of the initial capacity uh, for lithium sulfur. So here it is limited. This is uh, not 80% uh, uh, of the dip of discharge. This is 50% of the dip of discharge. So it's meaning that you do not have any more this 400 watt hour per kilo, but you have to divide more or less by, by two. But is to, to, illust uh, to illustrate what I was showing before, here you have two configurations, one at more than 400 watt hour per kilo, uh, the other at 370 watt hour per kilo. So what you can get uh, in terms of cycle, depending uh, how you make working your cell. No? Uh, basically, uh, I did not enter in detail, but uh, from Next Tech, they have a different strategy that ever what we have been done here uh, regarding the, the solubility of polysulfide. So I will not enter in detail, but if you have different density of cathode, you have to adapt your electrolyte too. And uh, so you can promote uh, high solubility of the polysulfide or clustering of the polysulfide, no? And if you go for one direction or another, you have one result or another. Uh, this is a result on the hybrid solid electrolyte uh, coating by Comabar on polyethylene separator. Uh, so this is a ceramic uh, lithium conductive uh, material that it is embedded in, uh, in polymeric uh, matrix. Here we reach uh, seven mitra of thickness on the top of the separator. So you have, uh, we have been working a lot. We, we meet a lot of issues to uh, make stable the composite because uh, the ceramic surface is reacting with the polymer and with the humidity, no? Uh, so it was not easy to, to make it stable. And also it's not easy to make it at seven micra uh, because uh, the particles in general are bigger, 20 micra or superior. So you have to, to pre-treat and to post-treat your material to, to reach this result. Uh, here what we get, so this is coin cell, uh, all the other was pushed, this is coin cell. Uh, we have been sent the material to front over on next tech, uh, this, uh, this month to next tech uh, for, for evaluating at larger scale. But basically what we see, if I can, yeah. So here you have the uh, bare material, no, as received material, the black one. So you can see the decay that you have now without coating. And what we see seems to be that when it is coating, uh, you add some resistance in the cell and you maintain longer the capacity, no? So uh, we are in the way to, uh, to test it today in push shell. This is uh, the, the estimator. So for people that know, um, lithium sulfur is not working as lithium ion. This is not the same voltage. Uh, this is not the same behavior uh, with the temperature, the silhouette, etc. So you have to, to build uh, uh, other algorithms <laughs> to control the state of charge on, uh, in this case, state of health also. Uh, here, following three different methods. So all of this, it is published. Uh, this is aim also to know how much you get uh, from the first life to, to be able to use it after. No? So this is available. Uh, we have been working on the recycling. So uh, here, this is a water-based uh, recycling. Um, so we can see that depending the parameter that we apply, we can reach more than 80% uh, of uh, uh, lithium recovery. Uh, basically, in the cell, you have carbon, sulfur, aluminum, copper, uh, lithium. So the, the, ma the metal of interest is, is lithium. So this is done also. Uh, regarding the impact, so uh, as you know, no, this, this slide has been done before the conflict uh, with uh, Russia. Uh, you know that today nickel is about more than uh, 100,000 uh, euro per ton. Uh, basically, sulfur is uh, more expensive to transport sulfur than to buy sulfur. Uh, 
we know that from the 90s, always we have been uh, have some issue regarding the supply chain. Uh, in the past was cobalt uh, with uh, different, uh, with instable uh, region, no? And uh, today is nickel. Since the 19, always we have been depending from someone on, on somewhere. Uh, sulfur is, is coming from Europe, is, co is a worse from the oil uh, industry, on the chemical industry, so we have plenty of sulfur. On the cathode is only sulfur and carbon. Um, so the safety uh, regarding the internal uh, core circuit, it is safer than, than lithium ion, and it is adapted to the uh, current manufacturing. This is in corn coating. I show you other process like the dry uh, processing, uh, but uh, uh, the cell that was done by Oxys, for example, was following this. Uh, I, I guess this is picture from Oxys. Yeah. Regarding the, uh, the application, so we believe that today uh, it is okay for all what it is drawn, so all what it is uh, uh, low, low level of cycling, no? uh, and required to be light also. So we believe that it is ready today. It, it is integrated already in some of these applications. Uh, after, basically, more cycle we will get or more application we will get, no? Uh, together with the issue that we have regarding the power, to give you an idea, all the curves that you see are, are cyclic uh, uh, C over 5 or C over 10 for the solid state, for example. And when you reach 2C, you are more or less at 70% of uh, the C over 5 uh, uh, beginning of load. No? So cyclability on power are, are really two drawbacks that are not solved today. But more you will increase this, uh, this parameter, more you will get application. It will be very tricky to, uh, to address it to a passenger car uh, for power, etc., and volume. Uh, but uh, we think that for this application, this is something completely possible. Uh, some link on some link regarding the different projects that some partner of Lisa are working with. So none of them inside the uh, BEPA or Battery Europe or LCBAT and so on, but uh, from UK and from Germany, uh, there is uh, some program that are promoting lithium sulfur. And that's all, many thanks. Thank you very much, Christophe. Uh, I would like to thank and congratulate uh, the four speakers uh, for doing a brilliant job. First of all, uh, I've seen that the whole audience has stayed very attentive, which is a challenge after a lunchtime. Secondly, uh, you have managed to stay well ahead of time. So that leaves us uh, more time then for the question and answer uh, session, which will be moderated by Peter. So we will have, um, well, almost 40 minutes for Q&A now. Thank you and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, the basically to open now the uh, Q&A session, I would have a lot of questions, but uh, it's, of course, I'm looking in the audience if they're popping up first questions. Yeah, please. This is Pietro Perlo. I have several questions, but let me start with, uh, with uh, our friends there on, uh, on, on the silicon layer. Uh, for a battery manufacturer, it is very important to understand what it is the electrothermal deformation of, of a cell. Now, many recalls that we have seen in the years uh, were because uh, the people that were designing the battery pack didn't think at all that a cell is uh, a living creature which gets old. Okay? So if you have an MC cell, when it is new, typically it deforms from 1%, getting old eight years, it may def the, the electrothermal deformation is 8% or so. This now is also reported in some data sheets of the, of the largest manufacturer. Now, when you go to high content of silicon, you have 8% when the cell is new. So the question for you is, do you already have any data on the electrothermal deformation over the years? Because you start from 8%. And if you don't want a fisharmonica, we say in Italian, in, 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 uh, in English, uh, accordion. You, you, you need to know what, where you are going over the years, okay? Uh, I don't know this w w what happens for, for, uh, for the sulfur, but for sure I know what, 
the importance of this is for battery manufacturers. Do you have any data, or are, are you going to plan any, any test over the years in this? Thank, Thank you very much. That's on deformation. Um, hopefully your mic is working. If you check. Like that? You, you want to answer? No, please, please. Okay, so I will go for lithium sulfur. In, uh, in the third project, Alize project, I believe you have the link uh, in, the, in my presentation. We did pack, we did module on pack. So uh, uh, for lithium ion, better you have the pressure and better it is, no? Uh, for lithium sulfur, it is breathing. So uh, you have to, for the strategy that we use uh, for the module manufacturing, was to, to give space in between the, the cell and to let them breathing, no? It's a, it's a bit difficult because, uh, because of the lithium stripping plating, the lithium metal, you have to apply pressure, it's better. But for the sulfur, you have to know apply pressure, no? So uh, uh, this is something that I did not show, but with different electrolytes, different type of cathode, you have to apply, or uh, some of cases, you do not have to apply pressure. So. Uh, uh, we are aware of, of about the uh, volume expansion for lithium sulfur. Do you have any, any data to associate with certain phase? Uh, I can, me myself, no, but I can know the womb can have, a, can have this data. Okay, thank you. Maybe Michaela. Yeah, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question because it's a, a very tricky part of the work. Uh, we still don't have uh, data, but we are planning to go this for this kind of test because it's really a crucial test. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You want to add? Not, I don't, don't want to add much. In the Cobra, we are in the same situation, so we don't have any yet, uh, the final demonstrator yet in terms of cells. So we expect to do such such experiments and such such uh, um, testings, you know, once we have the cells, so that would be. Okay, thank you. Uh, further, there is not a immediate question. Please state your state your name and affiliation, maybe before um, you start. My name is Dieter Seppai. I'm from Bogwana. Um One question, which is maybe as well linked to the breathing behavior. It's uh, so far as well in the morning session, we have heard always on pouch cells. Do you think as well on different styles like cylindrical cells? And is as well linked to the, the this topic is, if you have a sensor, can you uh, imagine that you can integrate it as well in a cylindrical cell? Maybe I can start. Um, from the tree belief perspective, pouch cell uh, are uh, uh, the one that we are going for. So we don't, uh, uh, we don't envisage uh, other formats other than pouch. This is, a given the, this is a given specs from the automotive industry for uh, maximizing energy density while minimizing cost, which is one of the overall and overarching target of the, of the, um, of the project. So uh, I don't, uh, uh, I cannot, basically mm, say more about cylindrical cell. We don't have direct experience with that. We go for pouch. Concerning the sensor part, uh, the sensor that we are developing in Tribelief are designed to be uh, integrated in a pouch. Uh, for the in-cell sensor, I don't see this as a possibility for other formats like the cylindrical. For the CMU, for the external sensor, of course it is might be that we don't need all the measurements of the, of the multi-measure on CMU, especially those which re regard the mechanical properties, which are tailored to be pouch, but for the other, yes, I it's a possibility. Anyone want to add something? Uh, for lithium sulfur, we have been, we are trying both cylindrical and push. Uh, it seems to be that cylindrical is not a good option for lithium sulfur. Uh, to give you an idea, for lithium ion in 18,664 mat, you reach a 3 ampere hour on nominal capacity. On lithium sulfur, you will be half of it. Uh, but uh, we have the feeling that maybe if we switch to solid state, uh, m maybe it makes sense to have something that m is mi minimizing the space that you have uh, for, for the electrolyte. 
On regarding the cost, uh, evidently is uh, much more cheaper to make cylindrical than push. So uh, some of the partners uh, of the consortium uh, already detect uh, a non-automotive market uh, that could be interesting for sulfur because at the end, regarding the material that you are using, if you sum a ship manufacturing also, uh, you have another type of market for, for this uh, chemistry, whereas the performance are lower. So uh, today I would say push for lithium sulfur, but I do not discard that, uh, that cylindric could, uh, could be an option in the future. Maybe before uh, handing over to the audience again, uh, may I add a question? Uh, certainly interesting having sensors well integrated, well embedded. Maybe you could all try to comment uh, getting rid of real sensors and integrating virtual sensors instead of, how do you see that for your technology? Uh, we did it in Alize, I believe it is reported. Uh, so it was deformation sensing. If you are looking on the discharge curve of lithium sulfur, it passes at least three times by the same voltage, no? So it's super difficult to, to make Coulomb counting, no? Or to check it by impedance, yeah, you have a peak of resistance when you are the first peak of discharge, no? But basically, what we did in Alize is to monitor with the deformation. On the deformation, follow pretty well uh, the state of charge on discharge, no? So deformation sensor for lithium sulfur. Anyone else wants to comment on virtual sensors? <laughs> okay. Yes, Pedro, you have a question? Yes, another question. Oh, but very much related. Oh, please. Oh, please, Oscar. Uh, uh, very much related to, to yours, uh, uh, Peter. Uh, but this is for, for Michele. So let me start with a, with a very provocative example. Uh, if you don't measure the temperature, or if you measure the temperature of your body with a, a very light sensor, you sometimes you don't you don't understand you have you have fever, but if you uh, if you put a, 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 a sensor which uh, weights some 100 kilograms in your head, even if you don't have a, a fever, uh, after one hour you measure fever. So uh, the question for Michele is this: uh, you are you are designing a 48 hour uh, watt hour cell because you you say you have 250 cell in two, in 12 kilowatt hours. So just making a simple. Uh, it, it, you are saying that you are putting a, a sensor per, uh, how many layers in every cell? Do you, do you have eight, uh, ten, uh, how many? No, uh, it's uh, larger. The cell is larger. 250 cell is the full amount that the project will deliver. For each pack of 12 kilowatt hours, we are embedding uh, um, 88 cells or 96, depends on how many models we, we put inside. So the, the cell is larger, the cell is 135 amp hour. It, uh, I mean, how many and sensors do you have per, uh, per, uh, per, uh, per cell? We have, uh, uh, for the external one, we are planning to have uh, one demonstrator with one cell per sensors. For the internal one, we are keeping these at the lab level. So if you have eight layers, we have eight sensors, mm -hmm. which is indeed the case of the 100 kilogram uh, temperature oh because the sensor is, uh, is very invasive and it, it coming to, to what Peter was saying, it's very invasive in the, in the, in the electrode. It is not just something uh, it's they're uh, looking it's at. It's not that invasive. Uh, we want to try in Tribeleve and in, in this research project uh, also a cell per cell monitoring to see how far we can go and uh, then tailor the um, design of the sensor for the type of application. There are, just diverging a little bit, uh, we are um, thinking cell for different kind of application. Tree believe is an automotive one, so most likely we will not need a cell per cell sensor, but might be a test bed to also, in, to also explore other approaches which might be used in some other application. If I think about an aeronautic application where safety has a different meaning, there we might have a cell per cell sensor. So we are trying to use the technology to try different approaches and to see where the industry is pushing or pulling forward in for, for different application. But at, at the research level, on one module, we are gonna try a cell per cell sensor approach. Okay. Thank you. Um, maybe before handing back to the audience, uh, a question for Jordi. Uh, 
in your in your application you have stated an increase of the uh, housing uh, strengths, the tensile strengths and impact resistance, and you're mentioning to uh, you're aiming at a four time increase uh, stronger than steel. Could you report on a progress towards this target? Thank you. Um, well, frankly speaking, I don't have the numbers right now, so. Um, that was one of the specific objects of the project, and uh, that was put in the frame of the green and recycling uh, new battery packs. Um, uh, also in the frame of uh, like improving the fire resistance of these battery packs, and in line with this improvement of the of the resistance resistance of these battery packs. So, I think that no, I think no. I'm sure these tests have not been conducted yet. The battery pack has been designed and has been manufactured, and that is next on the ladder. Okay. So you, you can't report anything about the ideas, what materials or what, because I mean, yes, that's something a little bit in, in, in contradiction to, to recycling. Uh, no, it's going to be wood. Wood, are we going to be using, are we using wood? That is what I mentioned during the, uh, the presentation. Wood is going to be the main component, and uh, uh, together with uh, recycled aluminum. Okay. So that is going to be the two main components of the, of the battery pack. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe in the meantime, someone has got... Yeah, there's obviously a question in the back. Very, very briefly, thank you very much. Lithium sulfur looks to be a very promising uh, cell. It's, uh, it's the energy density is uh, huge compared to the other one. What do you think is uh, missing Do we need to know? For example, to better understand the mechanism of uh, the sulfur cathode to... Uh, better to get a better interface uh, metallic lithium electrolytes for the solid one or even uh, the same question on the anode side is for the other uh, projects thank you very much yeah i believe there is very um, there is a lot of similitude uh, between the ongoing project uh, at least for lithium sulfur, I believe we can share work between the work that is, is been done for regarding the lithium. Um, and for the lithium sulfur in particular, we have to understand better um, how is working the ion transport mechanisms no? uh, in, in terms of bulk interface on interface. Uh, as I've been shown today, we have some example of solid state battery that are working. So we have to understand how it is working. Okay, thank you. Uh, m maybe I have a question for Michaela. Uh, you have in your presentation, you have uh, talked about nanostructured current co co uh, uh, collectors. Uh, so nanostructuring is fine and uh, usually Im certainly improves performance in, in different aspects. But sometimes it's a little bit an issue regarding long-term or cycling stability. Do you have any any results, any ideas about the the long-term stability of this of those nanostructures? Well, thanks for the question. Um, the good challenge for us uh, was uh, the stability of the anode because we all know that silicon has many issues. The most important is related to the volume expansion. But the innovation we, uh, we brought uh, with this kind of project is that our core, that is the copper silicide nanowires, are coming directly from the substrate. Uh, so it's a very stable uh, uh, structure on when we are depositing the amorphous silicon. And uh, regarding the advantage of having the nanostructure is not only that we are having the active material that is perfectly anchored to the substrate, uh, but by having this porous structure, this core, uh, also when we are depositing 1 mg, unfortunately, I didn't show the image, but uh, the interesting aspect is uh, that we are still having enough space uh, between the uh, different uh, nanowires, uh, even after 1 mg per centimeter square deposition, so we are enable uh, the breadth of the silicon and uh, we are having a very stable performances, especially after the pre -detiation. because as I was telling before, we, we are having a very stable cell after 350 cycle with a 90% of uh, um, the capacity retention that is uh, really uh, impressive for us because we all know that uh, the main challenge for the anode was the stability along a very big number of cycles. I don't know if I answered yeah, your question. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a question to the audience. Maybe someone. Yeah, you got a question in the middle of the audience. I think. Oh, yes. Thank 
you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brian Robinson from uh, Zemo Partnership in the in the UK. I'm I'm not a, a technical battery expert at all, and you'll probably understand that when you when you hear my stupid question. But um, it, it's more a, a sort of the fundamental nature of this of the research, and it's a question for all the panelists really. Um, it, it seems to me, as a non-expert, that battery technology is moving on at an enormous pace. Pretty much every week, I hear of a, a new breakthrough. Uh, you know, and it may be in Europe, it may be in the States, it may be in Korea, it may be in China. It, you know, everywhere is is working in this in this field and making rapid progress. So, to what extent do do your projects, many of which were, I guess, proposed and and costed and everything, perhaps back in 2019, perhaps three or, or even four years ago? To what extent has the state of the art moved on? Uh, and to what extent are you able to adapt within the project to that shifting sand around you and learn from it? Or are you are you just sort of keep your eyes closed and hope hope that um, by the time you get to the end of your project, the, the world hasn't moved on too much? <laughs> I, I would assume this was a question to the all to all of our presenters. Yes. So maybe Yeli will want to start. Yeah. <coughs> thanks, uh, thanks for this question. Uh, um, is not stupid at all as a question, in the sense that uh, um, we do see that we live in a society of information, and uh, the claims about battery technology, which are coming from all over the world, it's they are, in my opinion, um, very often uh, um, overselling pieces of technology. We I have re I have read really everything and the opposite of everything, and uh, I learned really to take with a grain of salt what what is what is. Uh, what is what is claimed about these batteries that can recharge in 30 seconds or can deliver solid state tomorrow and things like that. At the end of the story, we have really to be careful about uh, interpreting these claims. Um, there is a one fundamental truth that uh, the European industry is uh, behind the schedule. If we compare state of the art in Europe, what we can do, what we can deliver, and what Asian industry, for instance, can deliver. And European industry, European battery manufacturing industry is not yet ready to deliver at the same quality, pace, and scale of non-European competitors. And we are catching up. And uh, the fact that we are catching up is fundamental to our economy. To defend our economy, to defend automotive industry in most cases, since these are the first, um, the first application for, for battery cells, but many others will come. So, in, in, in our projects, in my projects in Tree Belief, but I think that I can speak for all the projects, what we are building are the technology bricks for building up the European battery manufacturing industry. And uh, uh, we keep an eye on what everything, everything that is happening outside, but also we keep a focus, we try to deliver, and we try to catch up this uh, delay that we do have as Europe in this strategic field. Okay, maybe Jordan, you want Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. I support all the words, what you were saying. Also, I wanted to compliment in the sense like, uh, well, lithium-ion batteries have been going on from uh, late of the 80s, right? So, and there has been many, many um, um, reports and many, um, but still, you know, lithium cobalt oxide, you know, is still present in many cells, you know, coming at the commercial level. And uh, obviously, that has moved to NMC and uh, graphite to hopefully moving to silicon at some point. So um, what I'm trying to say here is like, even though it has been many research, uh, the, the technological gap is still there. So there is a lot of work to do. And I think, you know, that is the project that we are presenting here in a way that we are trying to close these gaps. And uh, not just in terms of performance also, to keep the materials at the lower price and, and to be more sustainable, which is the three major topics of 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 this of this call um so i think in that sense so i think it is a great opportunity for all of us you know to 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 complement and 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 obviously i hope you know we can make a nice apportation on, the, on, on these fields thank you thank you jody michele you want to add yeah no i thank uh, them both uh, because uh, yeah the situation of course is that there is a huge gap between us and the asia but uh, I think that at this stage uh, we can be um, happy about our results because uh, as you saw in all the project, uh, we are all uh, uh, having particular attention on uh, uh, the materials uh, and uh, the recycling uh, and also uh, to 
to, to push the, the projects to an, an industrial scale that can also reduce the cost of the manufacture. So I think that all uh, of the projects that were explained today were really paying a lot of attention of this, all these critical aspects. So of course, as they told before, uh, the gap is still there, but I think that they are all moving in the right direction. Thank you. I don't know if you want, you want to add? add? Yeah, uh, maybe to say that no, we have more power of manufacturing. Uh, there is plenty of uh, gigafactories that are that are planned now in uh, in Europe. Uh, to to make better cell, we have to learn to make cell, whatever it is the technology. So um, I believe we uh, we will go much faster in the next year than uh, what we saw the last 30 years. Thank you. Maybe one question regarding recycling. It was addressed quite several times now, and I mean, uh, what what I what I'm learning is that uh, technologies or, or or particular material technologies quite well known, like steel, they they need to consider now with higher uh, recycling rates, higher impurities, and they really have rather difficulties to manage that. So maybe uh, with the different technologies which we have, which you have presented here, could you comment on the long run, considering a full, fully uh, circular economy, which means if you would have to recycle all the material, so we will end up with an increase, with a significant increase in impurities in the, in the materials. How would your cells uh, live with that? Let me tell you. I'm not sure I'm the most right person to, to, <laughs> to answer to a recycling question. Um, I can tell what I have seen uh, uh, around. Uh, um, recycling industry is uh, the other half of the coin of the manufacturing industry and uh, it is gaining momentum with a certain gap against the manufacturing industry, and that, that, that's pretty much clear. Um, we do have in Tribilev some activities concerning recycling. These are activities that will stay at, um, at lab level, and we target, if I'm not mistaken, 95% purity target. And I know uh, that 99% uh, is something that is possible, at least at lab level today. Whether this lab level will then become um, industry level, we will see. I think that there is a gap there to cover. But I do believe that um, in, in perspective, uh, we, can, uh, we, can, uh, we can live with these impurities. Uh, th as the technology develops, uh, we will get more pure and pure and pure material. And we can uh, significantly decrease the reliance uh, the endemic reliance that Europe has on, on raw materials. So I have a lot of hope in that direction. I don't know if I'm just optimistic about that, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that's, that that's quite an important aspect. <laughs> yeah. um, may maybe you could also, uh, I don't know, <laughs> guess what would be the effect on the, on the uh, uh, energy density or, or if, if, if could it be that like materials would c kind of completely uh, change the the performance if, if, if there are just impurities simply because they are electrochemically I don't know a kind of a poison there um, maybe we have some technicians it seems or you hand over Uh, from Letat, we, we will coordinate one on battery recycling. In uh, the kickoff meeting will be uh, on May. The name of the project is Battro. And uh, firstly, we do not plan to recycle uh, everything. Uh, basically, we we'll focus on lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt. Up to the dismantling, uh, we select a specific type of battery because you have to adapt your safety process, dismantling process, etc. So I, I believe in the future you will have kind of um, uh, factories for domestic battery or for the dismantling of domestic battery, other for car, on maybe the same plant of uh, hydrometallurgical process from different black mass mixture, no? 
Um, so on to answer to your question, I do not know, but uh, it is planned to, to be done in the framework of this project to retrieve the hydroxide lithium on the sulfate from cobalt and nickel at least, Morganes we will do other things, and to, to make new battery with that and to see uh, how I it is impacting. Yes, I think, yeah, it does. Um, just following up with my colleagues, uh, yeah, at, um, at COBRA, uh, just for being specific, we have few tasks. Uh, we is not obviously the main target of the, of the project, of the recycling, but we're going to be looking just very briefly, you know, at the possibilities, having the same target of 95% recyclability of all the components as the three believe. But I also wanted to mention that um, I think with the recyclability also, also comes the second life the batteries, right? So which is very important and something that we have to keep pushing on that. Um, um, eventually, everything has to be recycled, but we have to uh, extend the life as much as possible. And I think this is something that we are already seeing and we are very interested in really pushing, you know, extending the life of the batteries. And and uh, this is something that industry and, uh, and the new projects are clearly stating on, on the, on the under basics. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe I, I can also add uh, another thing uh, that um, it's an economic problem in the sense that uh, um, we don't maybe need to be completely independent in terms of supply of material. We just have to have diversified sources in order not to depend on a single stream. And this will economically change the market. So this might be sufficient. We don't need to recycle everything, but we might have have different supply chains and different sub sources, and and uh, and uh, we can we can be m much more independent ju just by that. So there is really an, in an entwining with the economic problem and with the market and with the behavior of the market that needs to be considered there. Thank you, Michele. There is another question in the back. Yeah. Good afternoon from my side, Noshinoma from EB. I have one question, one comment. Uh, often we see in European projects some cost targets of 70 euros, 75 euros at back level, even not on cell level. To which extent do you think it's realistic to apply such type of cost factors on for the technology that you are considering, knowing that most of the manufacturing facilities in Europe are not ready to process such type of materials and particularly not lithium, sulfur and solid state at all. And we all know that the cost of solid state, the coming five years from now to 2030 is going to be factor four to five, much more expensive than we, what we all know. So one point, because the processing cost. And maybe the comment is recycling I think we can increase the recycling efficiency as we wish. It is just all about the energy and the cost matter. And it's going to come by time. Battery direct is saves right now 55%. We are going to 65%. And the long term will go to 90 or maybe over 95%. It's just, it's a matter of time and matter of investment and upscaling. But nevertheless, we have still one problem that all the recycling facilities in Europe are focused on nickel and cobalt and not on lithium iron phosphate. And that's really a very problematic issue. Thank you very much. The cost. I think that this is a question for the commission. <laughs> 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 so wh wh where does this cost target come from? Um, uh, this is a very good question. Um, uh, it's something that uh, it's given by uh, the um, the economic viability of uh, of uh, of the of the battery. We do know that we have to go up to that cost level. That uh, for the LC Bat Five was 90 euro a kilowatt hour at a pack level. I think that for the cluster five destination to a one or two last year was below 100 euro. So that that that's what we have to land in order to be economically effective. And how we land there, there is still a long path. So at the moment, I think that we do live on extrapolation on that. And extrapolation that also try to take into account the recovered value from the material in a full circular economy. Whether then it will be 70, 80, 90, 100, uh, I, I really don't know. I think that no one knows as per today um yeah and i think that's that's the max that i can say it now is there <laughs> anything else <laughs> 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 
question? Yeah. No, I perfectly agree with him. Of course, uh, the 75 euros is uh, our target. Uh, realistically speaking, uh, the provision we did uh, specifically with the SI drive project is around uh, 150. So I think this is a more realistic one. Uh, but of course, we have all to keep in mind uh, that our final target uh, it will be beyond the project, most probably by 2030. Mm -hmm. we, we will try to achieve the 75. So. Well, this is a very good question, Professor, Professor Nosheen. Actually, I agree with my colleagues when we were preparing the cover. Uh, yes, I know, I think it works. So we were obviously um, struggling a little bit, you know, how to really prove, you know, that ambitious target. And eventually, obviously, we came all down to the cost and the using uh, cheaper materials and more sustainable materials for all the components, right? And we make that projection. And uh, it is difficult to prove that in a project that obviously goes or lasts for four years and is aiming for like one or two battery pack demonstrator, which eventually is not going to be cost effective. But the idea, I think the idea behind all this is like after two, three years, uh, when it comes to the implementation that we all expect to have this implementation at some sort of level. So we are having some tools, like really we can really help on that, on that, on that price target. Thank you. Yeah, what I can say, uh, Nashim is right. Uh, manufacturing is not ready for lithium sulfur at the level of lithium ion. But sulfur is 20 tenths, 20, 20 tenths euro kilo, uh, much cheaper than an MC. And the manufacturability is, uh, is uh, pretty similar, no? Once you have a dry room, so you have to add cost of dry room because not all lithium ion manufacturing today is done with dry room. Um, and today, yes, we have only piloting installation, one in Italy, several in, uh, in US and uh, LGKM in Korea. Uh, but yes, we do not have the volume of, uh, of what it is done today for lithium ion. Uh, but it, there is no reason for making it uh, much cheaper than uh, much more expensive than what you have for, uh, for an MC. In 2008, uh, together with my friends, now at months before it was Arcotronic at the time, we took uh, 200 products in the world, okay? Nothing to do with batteries. And in this product, uh, mainly the people at Mans, uh, Stefano Saguanti and others, uh, tried to understand what was the cost of the raw material and the final price. 200 different products, okay? And very surprisingly, the result was that the final price was in between 1.5 and 2. So whatever you develop, once you are mature in your development, the final price is one to 1.5 to 2, but very complex, including the cellular phone, okay? The final price is, if you add all, all the raw materials inside, is two times. And then we, we came to the conclusion, tell me what you have inside the battery, I will tell you, as an old Fiat guy, I, I will tell you what the final price has to be. And the Chinese today, believe me, are indeed following the same approach. Okay. 200 products, not just one, okay? This one better? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, looking again in the audience, we have a couple of minutes left for last questions. <coughs> if there are no questions from the audience, Questions from you, Joran? Not, not a question. Maybe, maybe I have a last question, kind of a summary for our for our presenters, having presented different technologies on anode, anode cathode, electrolyte system sensors. Uh, if if uh, you would take out one of the technologies you're developing, uh, what would be the most promising one? What you what would you bet if you have to bet on? Maybe, Michele. Yes, <coughs> I can start um, without saying the chemistry, because of course that's the core, that's the first thing that has to deliver. Um, we have uh, seen uh, some exceptional results from our CMU, our cell. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, we are already planning to scale this up to other type of application. So that's one of the technology that we'll definitely take from TreeBelieve and we will bring then in the next, in the next projects. Well, this is a difficult question indeed. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, mm, as a coordinator, I like all the topics that I'm involved on. So, um, well, I, 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 I was less familiar with the silicon nano. So I think even though it's, uh, it has a lot of challenges, it also has a lot of potentials. And, uh, and um, we still need to do a lot of um, 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 full cell characterization to really understand, you know, and to control, you know, the ratio between the, the different electrodes and the, the negative to positive and and optimize electrolytes and uh, and so on. But I think I think that is a good is a good material that in Cobra, as I said, you know, we are working with recycled material, which I also wanted to point it out again, you know, which which obviously is the important loop and what we are discussing here, you know, how to really recycle. And uh, materials that can be used uh, for for energy applications. Thank you. Well, can you hear me? Yeah, I have a little conflict of interest because I'm representing all the consortium, but basically I'm working on the anode, so <laughs> 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 I have a conflict of interest. As um, uh, Jordi told, uh, now of course uh, silicon is a very promising material, but uh, to be realistic, uh, what is impressive and uh, what we are really happy in our project is that uh, we found uh, the good uh, combination within all the three main elements of the cell. Uh, so by identifying the most promising ionic liquid, uh, we observed that uh, this ionic liquid is perfectly matching uh, both uh, the characteristic of the anode and the cathode side. So in this month, uh, we started in collaboration of our partner, uh, especially the CTEC, uh, to analyze uh, small prototypes of, of pouch cell. And uh, uh, we are very happy that uh, the harmonization of the full cell uh, is showing uh, very good results in terms of stability. So if I have to be honest, uh, I think that the good challenge was to to find uh, the good solution uh, for uh, uh, for having the harmonization of uh, all the three elements that we are challenging since uh, the beginning of the project. So, yeah. Well, for lithium sulfur, the battery cell by itself, uh, I show uh, some battery cell of more than 10 ampere hour at push cell level uh, with more than 400 watt hour per kilo on other with more than 1000 cycle. So uh, the challenge is to have both of them together in the same cell. Yeah, with that, I guess we could come to the end of the Q&A session if there is no immediate and very urgent question. Uh, from my side, I, I would like to thank the presenters, first of all, for the presentations. Uh, thank you for a very interesting discussion, also to the audience for the good questions. And I don't know, Johan, if you want to make a final statement? No, I just want to thank, indeed, Peter and uh, all of the speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you to the audience for the excellent questions. Um, now we have a coffee break until 4 p.m. And here you see the next rooms that you can... Um, go to to attend uh, the next session but first coffee downstairs thanks to all
and we are going to hear about the, uh, the, the speakers, about what they have developing, what they have developed, 